if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. Oh, real windy out there. Too windy. Weather alert tonight. Why didn't you been tell me this? I would have got prepared if I already knew this. Hey everybody, welcome back to Inspire Me, where I talk about current or relatable topics, all from a godly perspective. And today's topic is called Your Hands Dirty Too. See the sword coming upon the land if he blows the trumpet and warns the people. Then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself. But he who takes warning will save his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. Now the reason why I want to talk about this, a few days ago, I was talking about false prophet or prophetess. It's like God didn't leave me out of that the area yet, so he wanted me to talk about it more. It's going to be a couple of go-to scriptures that I'm going to give you, but the first one is the one I read, Ezekiel 33, verse 3 through 7. God deemed Ezekiel as a prophet. Yo, now, if he give you the word to go out and to tell people, okay, repent, the kingdom of God is near. Back then, you know, in those times, that's what people said. But, you know, nowadays, people probably use more modern terminology. But it's pretty much the same. If I'm preaching a word over the internet and telling people to come to God or a person in church in a pulpit. But pretty much, we're not just telling you blessings. We're telling you, okay, get your life right. God's coming back. There's a heaven and a hell. Now everybody goes to heaven. That's being a prophet that God called you to. So pretty much, when God is calling people... God is calling his prophet to give a warning and instead of you warning the people and you know telling them what thus says the Lord but you just all in your own bubble all in your own zone okay of course those people are going to die and it's in this their time to you know leave this earth of course they're going to perish without Christ what happens to a person who perish without Christ if you don't know they don't go to heaven however not just that person going there but the blood Meaning, the other person is in trouble. That prophet or prophet is in trouble too with God. And just because you didn't perish off of this earth like the other person, and you're still surviving physically, but spiritually, you pretty much the walking dead. You in trouble with God. That blood is on your hand. You know, how sometimes when, like back in the days, probably now too, but you know, back in the days, say for instance, if uh, one of your siblings probably did something wrong, and, and your mama or your dad might say, who did that? The other sibling might not want to tell on the other sibling, so they all be quiet. Your parent might say, since y'all all shot my clothes and don't know who did it, okay, y'all all get a whooping. Only one person did it, I, I hope. <laughs> In some cases, it might be multiple, but I'm just saying, sometimes it may be one person, one child that did it, but they all get in trouble. The exact same way, getting the person that committed the sin, then they just do it, but the blood of your hand, because you did not warn the people. However, it says, if you do warn the people, but the person still don't turn from their ways, okay, the blood is it's not on your hand because you did your part. I'm telling y'all the message. I'm doing my part. It's up to y'all if y'all listen and take heed. That's what's wrong with a lot of people. They listen, but they don't take heed. What the words say? They hear and a doer. Don't just be a hearer. Some people just hear what you say, but they don't do. They don't turn from. Don't be that person. What this scripture is, is talking about. Please don't get me wrong. If you've seen that other video, I had a part one and two. Fake prophets. Now, don't get me wrong. I was saying like, I might, might be talking about a fake prophet or prophetess. And they might not use their name or faces. And I was using an example like, some people might say, Oh, why, why you didn't show this person face? Or are you telling the person name and revealing to them? So I ain't got to fall and for the trap. And I was saying in that video like, you got a relationship with God. Then he will tell you what you need to do is seek God. And he will tell you. So the difference is, what I'm saying right now, 
what I said in the other video by you broadcasting a person's name and showing their face. God didn't tell you to do that. You, you don't have a relationship with God. You can't have a relationship with God. Ain't this prophet and prophetess got a relationship with God? Therefore, God can talk to you and tell you, okay, avoid this and that person or avoid this and that place or avoid this and that thing. But if you don't know God, you can't avoid it or you can't hear what he's telling you because you don't know God. So the first step is to take initiative to learn God for yourself. Other video, how I'm talking about how you are know if a person is a true prophet or prophetess of God. In verse 16, this is Jesus speaking. It says, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart. That's how you know they are a false prophet because it says they speak a vision of their own heart. Not God's heart, their own heart. Verse 21, it says, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they have prophesied. Not all, but some of the said, see God. God said, God said, God said this word. I didn't send them. Outside on their own heart. Verse 25, it says, I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed. I have dreamed. I was saying, and I think the part one, they said, don't get me wrong, God, you speak to us, but some people just be lying on the Holy Spirit. And all the messages are just uplifting and like, God never gives you warning. As you see here with Jeremiah, Jeremiah 26, 12. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the princes and all the people saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and against the city with all the words that you have heard. Now, therefore, amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of God. Then the Lord will relent concerning the doom that he has pronounced against you. Exact same way I'm telling y'all, those who hear my message, please don't just look at it like, okay, it's just entertainment, or oh, I just want to be nosy because I know how some people think. I just want to see what's going on. No, when you hear this message, and Jeremiah says, when I give you the words from the Lord, repent, alter your ways, I mean, you should be changing your ways. Asking God to help you and to come into your life to change your way. You don't want to be the exact same way. It's not to try to control anyone or make anyone do anything. But I'm praying by you hearing a message or somebody hearing a message. Or it doesn't have to be this message. It can be another message. Alters their heart and want to get a heart to God. Jeremiah 27, 9, and 10. Therefore, do not listen to your prophets, your diviners, your dreamers, your soothsayers, your sorcerers speak to you saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie to you to remove you far from your land. Everybody not telling you the truth. Even if it sounds good, or you're going to get a blessing, or you're going to get a favor, or you're going to get this and that. Some are actually true prophets and prophets of, of God. Not all, but I'm just saying, not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, is of God. But God repeats it again. You should not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie to you. I have not sent them, says the Lord. Yet they prophesy a lie in my name, that I may drive you out, and that you may perish. So not only is a false prophet or prophetess going to perish, but the ones who listen to them and believe their lies, eat up their lies, they go perish as well. So if you're that person, you might not be a prophet or prophetess per se. However, if you... You listen to their words and you believe it to be true, you gonna perish as well as them. Be mindful and careful, y'all. Okay. Another one's gonna be from Jeremiah 28. This is how I begin. Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, God of Israel. So he pretty much said, God said this now, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two full years, I will bring back to this place all the vessels of the Lord's house. All right, so not only is he saying that God said it, he's saying that God said he gonna break the yoke. Then he also gave a covenant pass in two full years. So he didn't just say, this is gonna happen. He, he said in two years. Okay, I'm not gonna read everything, but okay, just to give you a rundown in between after that, Hananiah was pretty much saying like, okay, the vessels of God that the previous um, king Nebuchadnezzar took away, I'm going to bring it back, and then God's going to take the yoke 
off of the captive. See, like, he gonna set them free. And he was pretty much saying, like, the old prophets before me, before my time, they pretty much prophesied it. Pestilences and um, wars and disasters. But I'm pretty much gonna prophesy peace, blessings, not curses. And that's, that's how you'll know that a real prophet is in your midst. So, Hananiah, <laughs> what you trying to say if a prophet or prophetess speak about warnings, about pestilences, about wars, about this and that, they're not from God, but as long as they speak blessings, they are from God? <laughs> okay, Hananiah, he was saying all this to Jeremiah, the other prophet. And that's what Jeremiah said, okay then, amen. Well, it, it, you know, if you, what God say, okay, let it come to pass. And he would about his, his business. When he was on his way, that's when God came to him and said, Listen, Hananiah, you um, pretty much prophesied it that the yokes are going to be broken off and, and people, they're not going to serve King Nebuchadnezzar. However, saying, Thus says the Lord, you have broken the yokes of wood, but you have made in their place yokes of iron. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron on the neck of all these nations that she, I'm sorry and all these nations that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon and they shall serve him I have given him the beast of the field also to, to break this down when um, Hananiah pretty much said oh um, God thus says the Lord he's gonna break the yoke off of the captives and not, they're not gonna serve King Nebuchadnezzar God had to say Hananiah's lying. Okay, you might have said you broke the yokes of um, wood, but in, in return, in place, there's actually yokes of iron. Okay, have you ever known a person? They could have been in prison. There's certain things they can't do. It's like some, sometimes they might feel like, oh Lord, like I, I feel like I'm just uh, caged up. And in actuality, they are caged up. Now they they've been released to the world. Now they're no longer in prison. However, if they're not like saved and born again, sometimes people can still be caged up in their mind. They could be in prison in their mind like certain things is like they have a mentality of being locked up in prison. Feel me? So it's like of course they're not in prison physically like they used to be. However, mentally, even though they're free physically, mentally they're still, in, they're still in prison. So that's what God was saying. That's what Jeremiah was saying. There might not be yokes of, of wood, but in return, you made yokes of iron. 